All right, today's the day. As you can see, we're sitting here in front of the rear clamshell engine cover, and we are gonna be getting ready to uh, get that thing finished so we can get it out of the mold. But there are a couple things that have to take place, little auxiliary functions, and we're gonna focus on one of those today. That is this rear wing here. Anyway, let's go take a look at that. Here in Southern Oregon, big bad wildfires going on in about three different places in our valley. So, actually clear above me right now, but typically it's been smoky, smoky the last couple days. In a wrecking yard looking for some weather stripping. Um, see if there's something I can find that will actually work for me because it's kind of hard to find something in the new category. People like JC Whitney and stuff don't do this kind of thing much anymore. So found this Plymouth Voyager, some weather stripping here that uh, I think we're going to try. And it seemed the moment we left the wrecking yard, things began to escalate. The heavy equipment moved in, the fighter and bombers came to lay their retardant down. But the mountain beside my house was ablaze. Well, this fire had been going about a month before and been put out, but the winds seemed to have uh, found some warm spots and kicked it back into action. I said this is uh, right close to my house, but I wasn't too worried because I've got about a mile and a half of pasture land and the wind working for me. But I had things to do, so we're going to build this wing. Now the releasing agent, the PVA had been damaged, so I'm just going to peel it off here and apply a new coat of PVA. So once I got the old one cleaned up, brush the new one on, and once that's dry, I can start my laminations. And get into a lamination of just the top skin for this wing airfoil section while it's here in the mold. But we wanted to get that piece done and taken out of the out of this mold where it's connected to the rear clamshell there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put four layers of this uh, bi-directional plain weave cloth, like I said, to create this uh, upper surface of this airfoil section. Now I don't need much in the trailing edge and the leading edge as far as bend or turn back. But on the side edges, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of extra material to create the sides of this airfoil section. And once I have those four layers in, I found that the that plain weave cloth is wanting to uh, kind of pop up and return to its original flat position and is not staying down in that trailing edge. So I had to resort to a, a mechanical clamping system to keep it in place while it cured. So I had a couple of pieces of this uh, about half inch acrylic tubing and I just clamped it right into that groove, held it in place, like I said, while it cured. And to keep those acrylic tubes from getting glued in place, just a layer of a pill ply, pull that off, and then scuff up the surface, get ready for the next step. And that next step is I'm gonna put a, uh, a spar into this wing to add strength to it have an attachment point for mounting it to the vehicle. So I just cut a piece of foam about three quarter of an inch thick, rounded the top surface. Now this twill fabric conforms much better than the bi-directional plain weave. So I'm gonna put a kind of foundational layer over that piece of foam to bond it in place. And like I said, give me a foundational layer to attach these uh, unidirectional tapes. I've used these tapes before, you've seen they're about three inches wide, but I'm just folding them in half. About an inch and a half is the height of this spar. So each time I put one of the tapes down, I'm getting double layers. In the end, about eight layers of the unidirectional. Gives me enough strength, I'm guessing, that I can probably hold five to 800 pounds. Now this wing's not gonna create the huge amount of downforce that you're seeing in modern supercars, but it is a small wing and these eight layers going to be plenty of strength to hold for whatever this wing's going to be able to push down on my car. So the problem with this, uh, putting this tape on in double layers is it takes a little bit more time to, uh, work that resin in, get it completely saturated. 
the one side get enough resin in there i'm going to put one more last layer of the twill fabric over to uh, tie it all together hook that spar in nicely to the surface give me a good clean area to work on for the next step So once that uh, last layer of cloth all saturated, wet it out, let this thing cure, and I come back the next day. Like I said, the whole purpose of getting this thing done now is to get it out of the way of the rest of this clamshell so I can get working on it without having it in the way. Once that thing's done, I've got my upper surface done, spar in place, ready to move on to the next step. Now to create this airfoil section, I'm going to fill this thing with expanding urethane foam. And I want to make sure I had enough foam to get this all in one batch. If you end up doing multiple batches, then the foam could be of different densities. Then when you're trying to carve, you get ridges or uh, bumps. So I mixed up a lot of foam to get the thing to fill. Then found out that, yeah, maybe I mixed a little too much foam. This baby really filled up. Turn it around, fill up the other side of the spar, let that thing expand. That thing's ready to carve my airfoil section. Sadly, I didn't get video of carving this thing because by the time I got to this point, it was nighttime and I wanted to do this outside because I detest working in this foam where I can't get rid of the foam dust that sticks to you static. So sorry, I did not get a video of it, but here you see the, the roughly carved airfoil section. You can kind of see the spar showing there. Here's the tools I use though. I've got this little uh, saw, this real rough rasp and some sandpaper. Like I said, just roughing this airfoil shape in real close to the shape it's gonna be in the end, but in the very final finishing, we will get the smooth surface and the exact airfoil section done. Now, once this whole thing is complete, there needs to be some way to attach it to the car. So I'm putting in some threaded inserts. Now these are this PEM style, um, like rivet expanded threaded inserts. But instead of trying to attach them to the fiberglass, which they would just pull out, they need to have some kind of surface area to uh, add pull strength, we'll just say. So I've got a piece of eighth inch aluminum, drilled the holes, expanded those rivets into there. And now I'm just gonna position them and cut the foam away so they can insert them. I'm gonna laminate right over the top of them. But to make sure that the resin does not go into the threads of these inserts, I'm just kind of packing them full of clay. And then once this whole Process is finished, this wing is done. I can uh, drill away just the fiberglass, have access to the insert, and then just dig out the clay. And then I'll be able to thread my fasteners right into the inserts. Now there are ways to uh, put inserts into fiberglass. This is one of the ways that actually you don't want to, uh, like I said, if you got some pull strength of just an insert is not very strong this multiplies the pull strength incredibly but in fact in this application there won't be too much pull and i'm hoping hopefully all the strength is required in uh, pushing this wing should be pushing against these fasteners and the little plate with the two fasteners that one's going to be mounted right up against the spar so the weight should be pushing onto the spar rather than into the foam So just taking the razor blade, cutting about an eighth of an inch away in the foam. Then I'll step away also and get a drill bit and kind of uh, drill out a little bit of the foam where the insert will uh, stick down further into the foam. So between the spar, the skins, and the strength of the foam, this wing should easily hold any kind of forces we can put on it. I'll probably have an Arduino system running it and it probably won't deploy only at lower lower high speeds or higher or low speeds, whatever you want to say. But at higher speeds it'll pull flush for aerodynamics. Yeah, 
And once I got those uh, inserts ready, this foam is cut away close to the trailing and the leading edge. So what's going to happen is the fiberglass is going to come around and go into this little groove and bond to the backside of the skin that we've already created. Same thing on the trailing edge, because we want to keep any fiberglass off of this back surface, which is going to be showing to the back of the car. In previous videos, you've seen me put this uh, microsphere slurry on top of this foam because the fiberglass just does not come out very well going straight against the foam, usually really bumpy and starved for resin because the foam kind of sucks up the resin into the little open cells. So we're mixed up this micro sphere slurry and going to coat this whole thing, covering all the foam, but making sure we don't get any of that uh, slurry down into the groove because we want to keep that a uh, surface of that fiberglass, that first skin nice and clean. So we have a good bond when we start adding our skins to this side. And once we had a good coat, let it cure, come back, sand it, knock down all the high spots, get it as smooth as we can without breaking through to the foam again, and making sure we get a good sanded, scuffed up surface for the spar that's showing through on that high side of that on the curved surface, because we want those skins to bond not only to the foam, but also to the spar directly. So for our final skins, put on some resin, get ready for adding our fiberglass. And you'll see here, I'm going to start off with a twill fabric that's going to conform easily to this front curved edge. But not only a front curved edge, but it also has to go into that groove and make a complete fold back so that it can attach to that inside surface of that skin that we took out of the mold. But this fabric works great for that in making those hard transitions. But you might also see there's a little bit of problem here that in the end, there's going to be a kind of a gap on that leading and the trailing edge. But the answer to that is we're going to mix up some more micro spheres this time even a thicker paste, basically kind of a fairy putty. And we will complete the whole airfoil section by filling in that front and the trailing edges. Right now it's just building up these skins to get the strength. But in the end, once this uh, surfaces are all completed with this fairing putty, then we'll put one last layer of a real light, a super lightweight, like two and a half ounce uh, satin weave that'll give us our final finish, tie all the edges and the corners together and give us a surface. From there on, we'll prime it and put our automotive paint on it. But before then, we're trying to achieve our strength of this wing. So we're putting on this, like I said, this twill fabric to make the adjustment around all the curves and into the grooves, get our bonding of two skins together. And then we'll move on to another fabric that produces the actual structure of the skin for this side of this wing. So once that twill weave is on, I'm moving on to these uh, heavier bi-directional plain weave cloths. And they're much stiffer and they do not seem to stay stuck to the epoxy in tight curves. And so they keep wanting to pull away from the tight curves. And I'm going to show you how to solve that problem here towards the end of the video in Jay's super suggestions for this week. But we're going to go ahead and build up four layers of this uh, <clears throat> cloth to make, give us our structure of this whole wing. So between the top surface we had in the mold and then this back surface, like I said, this wing should be plenty strong to handle the weights that we're going to be putting on it. So we just work that cloth around, get it saturated the best we can, four layers, and this wing should just about be done. Like I said, we've got to solve that problem of that pulling away. So here you can see that plain weave bidirectional cloth just does not want to stay stuck down around these curves because it has a uh, fibers running in actually three directions, but the two that require it to pull stiff gives us a lot of strength, but like I said, it keeps wanting to pull up. 
but the twill weave bends easily around the curves and so it does not pull away from the epoxy at all. So the cohesive bond of that fabric with the epoxy is enough to hold the plain weave fabric in place. So once we've got our three layers of plain weave on and they're trying to pull up around the edges, we're just going to go around the edge and put this twill as one last layer around the edge. Like I said, it'll hold that edge of the plain weave down until the cure takes place. And then it's just a matter of one more little strip down the center of the plain weave to hold everything into place and complete the structure of the wing. Anyway, that's a little thing you can do to solve the problems of working between the different types of fabrics and the characteristics that they each have. Done. So we got that rear wing well underway and you saw the beginning of the video, me having one of these flat panels for that wheel well. You'll be seeing video for those black panel fabrication coming up. And of course, that rear clamshell. Be pulling that out of the mold real soon. I hope to have a video of that thing in its complete form. Anyway, thanks for stopping by today. Come back, see us again.